Okay, now after introducing the scheduling technique, now we want to zoom into a network diagram. Okay, but before even uh, we go into specific network diagram, namely AOA or AON and PDM diagram, we need to introduce uh, a few uh, concepts and terminology again. Okay, and then later on, uh, perhaps by tomorrow, then only we go into specific uh technique okay from the history way back in 19 remember gun chart was developed way back in 19 uh, 1910 and then in the mid 1950s they basically developed so-called uh aero diagram okay they they developed aero diagram 1950s so so aero diagram was the first and then subsequently PERT was, was being introduced using the concept of aero diagram, but PERT do have uh, three variations of uh, duration for each activity, whereas in normal situation, AOA, AOA diagram would basically require only one, uh, one duration. Okay. And then in 1960s, the concept of AON, I miss AON diagram here, AON diagram was being introduced. Okay, it was being introduced by different uh, person anyway. Then uh, subsequently after that, the PDN diagram was being developed. You see, so by right I should add AON. So I would group these uh, two basically together because they are related. Whereas AON and precedent diagram uh, method are basically uh, the same thing. They originate from uh, AON diagram, but it is an enhanced version of AON. So the uh, basic similarity between AOA and AON diagram, basically they use the same uh, predecessor or logic relationship, namely called uh, finish to start. Finish to start. That is very simple. After we finish activity A, then basically we start the following activity. And that is the basic type of relationship. But when we talk about precedent diagramming method, there are uh, three more additional relationships that we can use. Uh, we can uh, look at those things later on. Okay. Advantages of network technique. Network technique basically allow us to show critical path and activity. Okay, this is the one of perhaps the main reason, the main reason why basically we wanted to uh, connect all those activity is for us to figure out which one are the critical path. For what reason? Okay, for what reason we wanted to know the critical path? Well, critical path basically indicate the longest duration, uh, the longest duration among uh, the different path of the uh, network diagram and eventually it will determine the project duration period so the project duration period will take after the critical path the longest duration i will show you later on and uh, when activity uh, basically sit on the critical path those activity we call it critical activities critical activities and why do we need to know critical activities? Example, let's say there are two or three activity. Okay, one activity, then running almost, uh, almost at the same time, for instance, let's name it A, B, C. Okay. Among A, B, C, for instance, Let's say B is the critical activity, A and C are not critical. So the three activity require utilization of a mobile crane. Okay. Maybe the activity might not be close together. Mobile crane or in one. So mobile crane cannot move, uh, cannot be at, at the three places at the same time. So one have to be, uh, 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 it must position at one particular place at one time. 
So if we can distinguish between critical activity and non-critical activities, we are going to put the, the, the crane on the critical activity, which basically B. Whereas the other activity A and B, as we calculate uh, shown, they are non-critical activity, simply mean they do have what we call free time that we can delay the activity. Delay in such a way that uh, we can stretch the activity, the activity in order to allow us to work on um, activity B and then the crane will basically free to work on activity A and C. And that is basically are the reason why we need to distinguish between critical activity and normal activities. Effective resource planning later on when we interconnected uh, activity together, then only you can see uh, the graph, the resource graph will be developed. And uh, the most important thing you wanted to see from that graph, whether there are resource conflict or not. Similar to the case of uh, the crane that we are, we only have one crane, whereas we plan crane to be working at the same time in the three different places. So uh, the, the, um, the, if we use computer, for instance, the computer will basically give indicator, indicator in such a way you have a resource conflict, then we need to react to that kind of indicator. Okay, we can see easily if we use the software, otherwise it's very difficult. We can evaluate optimum project cost. Uh, as I mentioned, if we want to compress the project, maybe our assumption is that the, the, the cost of the project will be, will be uh, uh, increased, but not necessarily. And that is the issue. Okay, not necessarily because when we do planning, we can rearrange the activity uh, around actually. The good and creative planner or scheduler should be able to basically um, put all the activity within the time frame, but at the same time try to push the cost at the minimum level. That should be the uh, the concept. Okay, when we do planning and scheduling, we try to re to arrange everything, and then everything fall into a very good pattern, and we execute the project at the minimum cost. But the issue is that are the planner doing that? Uh, most of the time, they might not be doing uh, that due to the fact that it is not going to be easy. Okay, a lot of revision of uh, activity uh, and it, it is hard work in order to reach the uh, optimum project cost as long as uh, the project make money that's it uh, no need to uh, to to push the cost until the optimum because you are not getting any anything in any way unless the, pro, the 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 boss tell you okay if you can try to to uh, uh, to make the planning and scheduling until optimum cost, okay, we will share the profit or extra money, you will get bonus or whatever with you. Uh, that will be a different story. Determining, determination of extension of time, yes, because once it is in network diagram, then only we can see the impact. Uh, of course, updating the project will be easier if we have software because it is a lot of work. Okay, Every day you need to update, you need to have the information. Critical path method. Okay, critical path method is method to identify uh, critical activities and how long um, that particular path that can determine the overall project duration. So critical um, path method is the calculation method. And sometimes people get confused with the terminology. We can use uh, two, uh, two uh, technique, namely AOA and then AON diagram subsequently PDM diagram. In the old days, normally all old, old generation, when uh, when we talk about CPM, okay, when we talk about CPM, they basically relate CPM to aero diagram, AOA. Because remember, way back in 1950s, these are the method that was being developed as a network diagram first. So they get used to using this kind of method and 
somehow the CPM diagram, uh, CPM uh, method, they, 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 they basically relate to AOA. It is like uh, the toothpaste, eh? Colgate. Everybody say Colgate, 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 Colgate. Colgate is just a brand name, okay? So uh, critical pass is the calculation method. And the, whereas the AOA diagram and AON diagram is the graphic representation of um, what we call a, a scheduling technique, okay? Both will, will give the same result because uh, the calculation basically will end up to be the same, except that the way graphic represent will be different because that is how uh, the method was being developed anyway to 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 dis, to differentiate between one graphic and another critical path method uh, as we mentioned we can distinguish the critical and non-critical activity the longest duration and then uh, we can see exactly the impact and uh, those things can be uh, represented either in aoa diagram or pdm diagram and of course you need to to learn and that is what we are doing okay uh, today and tomorrow we are trying to understand critical path method uh, based on this thing and at the end of tomorrow i'm sure you will you will get the concept okay you can easily calculate given whatever uh, error diagram or pdm diagram you should be able to do that okay all right this is an example error diagram error diagram remember Activity are being represented by arrow. So that's why activity on arrow. So we we write down activity uh, on top of one arrow. So arrow represent activity. Okay. And event, event basically is being uh, reflected by this node. This one, this is node. This is what we call starting event. This is finish event for A. So if you want to draw uh, an activity, even though it is arrow, it is not going to, to be complete. So you should start with one node and then close with one node. And then the rest of activity uh, will be repeated uh, using the same concept. One starting node and then one finishing node. Okay, so that represents one event and the activity is there, A. Whereas for PDM diagram or AON diagram, activity is being represented inside the nodes. Here, this is the node. The original node, remember the circle, as we do not want to get confused, uh, uh, people invented or basically changed the node from circle into box. And because it is box, the inside the box, basically we can put many, 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 many information. Uh, this is when we are later on we are going to calculate okay we are going to put calculation you will see all kind of figure will be coming out uh, will be shown inside the diagram in order to for us to know when are we going to do when are we going to start finish late start late finish okay i will i will explain about this terminology early start early finish late start late finish Total float A is basically the activity and D is the duration of activity. Okay. If, for instance, in arrow diagram, let's say duration is five days. So we put it there. But here we put five here. Ah, so that, that is basically the, uh, the concept. And if we do have uh, two activity, A and then B, the, the, there is uh, also arrow. Okay. This one is the arrow. But this arrow basically do not represent uh, an activity. It just represents the relationship. Remember, on the left side, indicate start. On the right side, indicate finish of A. And then when finish, when activity A finish, then activity B will start and then finish. And you notice that this, this kind of uh, thing indicate FS. FS is basically finish to start relationship remember i told you aoa and aon basically start with finish to start relationship when it was they were uh, it, uh, they were invented initially but then aon basically uh, do transform 
into PDM diagram by having different variation of relationship. Okay. So in this, uh, if we are going to draw using A O A diagram, I should draw something like this. A, uh, then B. So on the left side of A here, start, and then uh, on the arrowhead is finish. Then B will start, and then B arrowhead is basically finished. And you notice FS, so it is the same. They do have a uh, same kind of relationship, except that the way you draw uh, might be different. Avoiding terminology confusion. This is what I uh, told you before. Previously, AOA diagram was always being dubbed as a CPM. Old generation normally, uh, when uh, you show or you tell them CPM, uh, okay, so they will show AOA diagram. Whereas critical path method is just a calculation method in order to generate uh, the longest path, and then at the end of the day, we want we want to know the pro overall project duration, critical activity, and whatnot. We can use in either AOA diagram or even uh, AON subsequently PDM diagram. Okay, so that is the concept. Okay, now activity on arrow. Remember how to draw uh, a network diagram using. Uh, AOA diagram again start with node circle doesn't matter big or small okay because inside the circle there we are going to put some values here so that's why sometimes we have we do have compartment we are going to put values what are the values we are going to put early start early finish late start late finish and that is uh, the value that repeat inside the uh, activity b etc but the, the the value might not be the same but in terms of uh, uh, the, the terminology okay each of the activity will have early start early finish let's start let finish we'll repeat in the following subsequent activity okay all right that will be arrow diagram and this is example when uh when you want to draw arrow network because it is network diagram normally we will start with one uh, node okay one node uh we don't have to call it start it doesn't matter just sometime uh, this start 20 40 10 this is what we call error uh, we call it node numbering in order to distinguish uh, between uh, different nodes Okay, and this node numbering normally, instead of using one, two, three, four, five, we are going to use a big number, big or bigger number. Uh, if we do not have many activity, so uh, instead of using one, we, we use ten. Okay, that's fine. In some big, 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 big network diagram, they use they even start with one hundred, two hundred, four hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Why is it so? Well. If you just simply use not numbering one, two, let's say you remember that you you, you forget to add uh, activities or you want to split activities in between A and B, for instance. Maybe you call it B, B, B1, B2, B3, B3, B4, whatever. But then how are you going to come up with the not numbering? Because you already use up one, two, three, and you mess up the whole thing. Okay, that's why. If we have a big number, we can we can still uh, put 11, 12, 13, 14, or 101, 102, 103, etc. That is the concept. Okay. And you notice that uh, in this diagram, this is an arrow diagram, there are many paths. What does path mean? Path means from the starting, from the start. Okay, from the start here, and then it goes into here until the end. So this diagram basically reflect three paths. Three paths. From start, then it goes into 10, goes into 40, 50, and end. Okay, that, that will be one path. 
and then from start 20, 40, 60, end, that will be another fourth path. And then from start 30 and end, that will be the third path. So in this diagram, there are three paths. But among the paths, they, there is only one being shown in this diagram as a, in the red color there, uh, that we consider as critical path. Uh, in the critical path method, this is what we want to get or to know from our network diagram calculation, critical path, okay? Later on, uh, at the end of the slide, we do have critical path explanation. Okay, now example, again, arrow diagram. You notice inside this arrow diagram, there are values, okay? There are values, uh, how do we get this value, okay? A stand for activity A, and then two, this, this is what we call duration of the activity A, and that goes until H, for instance. And when we start doing the calculation, we are going to start here, this value, zero there as early start. And this one is basically, we consider as early finish. This one is basically late start, and then late finish. Date, okay, but when we uh, show in terms of calculation, we use a num num uh, numeric, num uh, numeric values. We need to say start from zero, one, two, three, whatever. But in reality, in uh, Microsoft Project or Primavera, they basically use date. That is the issue. Eh? Okay, how do we start with calculation? Zero, zero plus two, and then the project will end in day number two, at the end of day number two, okay? Then B, B will start immediately. So two plus three equivalent to five. And then how about C? Two plus two equivalent to four. Okay. For D, four plus, uh, four plus, uh, 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 no, sorry, five plus four equivalent to nine. And then for E, four plus three equivalent to seven. And then you notice that there are two activity going into the same uh, nodes here. And if, for instance, we add 9 plus 2 equivalent to 11 as one value for F, 7 plus 3 equivalent to 10. So the bigger value will basically end up into this, uh, this uh, uh, space here. So meaning to say H, H have to, when can H basically start? H can only start when G, uh, F and G completed. F completed on 11 day, whereas G completed much earlier. But in reality, H can only start on 11 day because he has to wait for uh, both uh, completed, which basically F completed much uh, later date. So 11 plus 1 equivalent to 12. So this 12, this is what we call project duration. Project duration. And this is what uh, we want at the end of any network diagram competition, we want to get this value. And in the final exam or assignment, whatever, this is what we are looking, uh, looking at. Eh? At the end of the day, the question might ask you, uh, please construct the network diagram based on whatever data that we give. We normally give list of uh, activity and then uh, duration and then uh, predecessor. From that, you must be able to read and interpret that in order to, to construct the network diagram and then do the calculation. So you will get the project duration. You see, that is what we want. If you follow step by step, you should be able, unless you draw wrongly. Uh, if you draw I wrongly. Have questions. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, at uh, point C, uh, the last state has number is different between um, at B, which is B is 5, 5, but C is 4, 5. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> now we focus on the upper, uh, uh, upper, uh, what we call values first. Not oh. at the bottom value, because the bottom value how to get the bottom value, uh, that is what uh, we are going to go into that thing later on. 
uh, what I did basically um, early start plus duration early start plus duration equivalent to early finish that is formula this is what we call uh, forward pass forward pass calculation in a network diagram and then to get the late this remember this late finish and late uh, late start and late finish we are going to do the backward okay the backward pass so called backward pass uh, backward pass in order to get the value of uh, uh, what we call late start okay late start equivalent to late finish minus duration okay instead of uh, uh, adding the value with the duration and now you have to subtract okay okay later on you need to understand the concept first early start early finish let's start let finish okay so i do not want to go into this calculation uh this the the bottom uh, value there i just want to mention okay i just want to mention that once you develop a network and then you put the activity there duration there then basically you can complete the duration and from that duration you fill up all the network diagram then it will give you uh, a few information such as project duration uh, later on uh, what we call a critical path you notice that there is a blue thick blue color there that will be indicator of critical path okay we have not explained to that yet and then we are going to get the value of total float total float and free float okay free float i will explain about this later okay then now next will be activity on node okay activity on node as i mentioned activity instead of being uh, drawn or written uh, as an arrow Okay, we put on the arrow. Now the activity is inside the nodes. Remember, the node basically re represented by a circle, which is like the previous one. This is what we call nodes. Nodes. Node. This is a node. But then, uh, as not to confuse people, uh, because uh, AOA basically using the circle, and if you use uh, AON as circle, then people get confused. So change that thing they change that thing into square so that's why nowadays when you see network diagram with square so basically you know this is activity on node if there are two activities you just simply draw one particular square and then another square this is a this is b you know that there are two activity but then you need to connect those activity because the concept of network diagram is always uh, the connection. If not, then we shall not call it a network diagram anyway. Okay. So the arrow is there, but the arrow is uh, does not represent any activity. The arrow only represent relationship, relationship, and this relationship will basically varies according to the way you draw them. Okay, the way you draw them remember on the left side of activity we call it start and then on the right side we call it finish again repeat after it says start finish when the arrow is coming from the right side we need to say f and then it is going into the the left side which is s so the relationship is we call it finish to start if you draw the activity is coming from different uh, different angle for instance here let's say i draw a and then b see i draw something like this so you know that a the left side is basically start so the relationship start and then going into b the left side is also start so the relationship is now start to start so start to start the um, the calculation would basically uh, would be different. Example, let's say activity A uh, do have five days, require five days. Activity B, three days. So how do we do the calculation? We start with zero. Zero plus five equivalent to five. 
So we need to say activity A finish will be completed in uh, five days at the end of five days, day five. And then this five will be transferred into this box, five. Five plus three equivalent to eight. So this is what we call project completion date uh, on the eighth day. Okay, on the eighth day. But if, for instance, I draw using start to start relationship, so A is uh, five, B is three, okay? Then the calculation will, will be different. A, zero plus five equivalent to five, but the B, B, we are going to use the relationship from start. Start value for A is zero. Now, this is zero, zero plus three equivalent to three, you see? Now you can see the difference. A will be completed in five days, whereas B will be completed in three days instead of B in this situation completed in eight days because you have to wait for A completed. Whereas in a different type of relationship, B can go by themselves. Maybe uh, B is basically reflect by different activity or um, being, um, being done by different team. There are two teams, okay? Uh, that is... Uh, the uh, importance of relationship and it will determine the calculation. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, this is an example of PDM diagram. Okay. I, I told you before, AON diagram is very simple. If I use start to start, this is not AON anymore. This, this is basically PDM. So, AON diagram, everything is using finish to start because uh, it is only basic diagram. They developed way back in 1960s. Only then they developed PDM diagram. Okay, now we are going to see uh, PDM diagram. Okay, in this relationship, you notice that uh, this type of uh, relationship is basically finished to start because it start. This is left start finish, start finish. Okay, and then from here to here is also finished to start. Uh, and then how about from A to D? A to D is basically start to start. Uh, now it is different relationship. When you see different relationship, then finish to start. This is what we call PDM diagram. PDM diagram. This is, this is uh, something special about PDM diagram. And then between D and E, also finish to start. And then from uh, E to C, is also finish to uh, Finish start diagram. And you notice uh, another thing here, this value. This value, we call it lag. Lag positive sign 2 or lag, there is no lag, and then lag positive 1. So what is this lag thing? Uh, it's all about, okay? Okay, now let's go into a simple calculation. We do not want to go very detailed because uh, we do have one big slide for PDM diagram. Okay, just very quickly. A, we start with zero. Zero plus two equivalent to two. Okay, simple. And then how about a B? Okay, two transfer here, two, two plus two equal to four. All right, okay. Then you notice that here, uh, why not four? Okay, why not four? Because they are interrelated activity coming into this one. We must go into D first. Okay, D, start to start relationship plus lag one day. Lag meaning to say delay. Instead of starting on the same uh, day as this value, you delay a little bit by one day. That is what lag means. Okay. So, so the calculation will be 0 plus 1 equivalent to 1. So 1 is here. Inside here, 1. 1 plus 1 equivalent to 2, all right. 2, then transfer here to 2 plus uh, 1 equivalent, equivalent to 3, okay. And you notice that there are two activity going inside C, meaning to say C can only start after uh, B and then E completed. E is completed at uh, on the third day, okay, which is uh, much uh, earlier, but then the issue with the uh, B completed on the fourth day, but then it will be uh, the starting of C will be delayed by one one day. What is the example of delay? For instance, uh, concrete curing. Uh, when you pour concrete and then you want to erect column, let's say you pour concrete on 
the, the, the slab or the floor. Then subsequently, the next activity would be erecting column. You, can, you cannot erect column uh, immediately after you pour concrete. Concrete is still wet. So you need to wait. So the waiting process in uh, construction, we call it curing process. We let the uh, concrete dry up, uh, maybe, I don't know, one or two days, whatever. So curing is, it doesn't have any uh, specific activity except that you pour some water and then you you cover by uh, gunny sack at the guni apa semua tu supaya dia tak dehydrated very quickly so it doesn't involve a uh, really activity but then it is necessary ah so you can utilize uh, inside the uh, pdm diagram using this concept but then the calculation would be uh, you have to account the calculation so four four plus one equivalent to five so five will be the longer period uh, where basically c uh, have to wait until uh, before c can start remember this one is three so between five and three uh, five will be uh, will be shown in this diagram then lastly five plus one equivalent to six so six is basically the project duration completion date so you see the PDM diagram do have variation of relationship, which will influence the, the calculation, plus the concept of a lag, and then later on, I will introduce the concept of lead. Okay, so don't worry, we still a long way to go. Basic component of network diagram, we must have activity or task. How do you get this thing? You need to have W, you need to develop your WBS, work breakdown structure, and then you need to have logical relationship between each activity. So it is better known as predecessor. Or we can use successor. Successor is the one that come after that activity. Whereas predecessor is the activity that come prior to that activity. And then we do have arrow. In AOA diagram, arrow is very important because it indicate the activity itself. Whereas in AON diagram, arrow just uh, basically reflect the relationship, which is also important. Of course, node is there. Okay, uh, node in arrow diagram uh, uh, shown basically event, starting event and finishing event. Whereas node in A AON diagram indicate the activity itself, and then path, path or critical path. Ah, okay, later on we will introduce those things. Activity is the breakdown. Okay, we already mentioned those things. Okay, this is an example of activity A, D, C. Uh, start. Start is also activity, but we still start. Start doesn't have any duration. Uh, we call it important event. Remember the the terminology that we use is basically milestone. Okay. Milestone is basically when uh, those activity is do have a uh, zero duration, but normally the start and finish we only put at the beginning or at the end, not in the middle. Okay, there is no reason you do that. And then type of activity could be many. If in the project management scope, as I mentioned, we start with initiation, then uh, the next uh, activity could be feasibility. The next activity could be design, procurement, uh, those kind of thing, uh, example of activities. Okay, milestone we already cover, dummy. Okay, this is the dummy normally we put in AOA diagram. Remember, dummy activity is a fake activity. Fake maksudnya tier one. Activity, uh, it is not a real activity. It is just uh, to reflect the relationship, especially in AOA diagram, where without those dummy activities, sometimes it is very difficult to, to, to complete the network diagram. So, it does not connect all the network diagram. In uh, we do not want to miss anything. So, we do require dummy. Later on, I will show you example. Okay, this is an example of activities. Let's say one project. This is example of WBS. 
you see you split the activity between uh, structure general roadway and then and in wps they uh, do have what we call level this is what we call level one level two and then this could be level three it depends if you look at in term a group so this could be level one this could be level two this could be level three okay so you have to look at in term of the grouping uh, and uh, later on uh, uh, level one level two and level three it is like um, like the section and top subtopic inside the textbooks remember the textbook normally start with item 1.0 as introduction and then if there is a, a subtopic under introduction then it will be 1.2 and 1.1 1.2 1.3 and then if uh, doesn't have any more subtopic then it goes into two uh, then basically it will start with 2.0 2.1 to uh, it is something like that okay all right now dummy activity okay dummy activity is basically we draw dummy activity using dotted line not the thick line dotted line okay let's say i erase this uh, dummy activity if let's say i do not uh, put any dummy dummy activity how do i read activity uh, activity uh, for instance activity uh, d for instance okay for instance, I read activity D. So activity D basically uh, have the connection with F only. It has nothing to do with B. You see? But once we put activity dummy, uh, then activity D will basically uh, wait for activity B and then F completed. Then only they can basically start. Similarly, if you look at this uh, figure, uh, this one you you can get confused because of uh, A, B, C. It is not activity by right. They should uh, put activity here, F. Uh, then only you can see. So the the bottom figure might be better. Okay, let's focus on activity C. If without this dummy, how do you read activity C? Activity C will start after B completed. Okay, fine, straightforward. But once you have the activity dummy, okay, uh, being uh, draw something like that, meaning to say C, when C uh, wanted to start, C have to wait for B and E to be completed. Let's say B completed uh, at the day number 10. Whereas E completed on the day number 11, maybe E is a longer duration. So you cannot start E in 10 days, even though you can see it's very closely related. So you need to take into account E. So that's why dummy activity is being used in order to, uh, to complete the, uh, the uh, connection between one activity and another activity and especially inside the arrow diagram we need those things later on when we show uh, you can appreciate the, the utilization of dummy activity okay wbs work breakdown structure uh, we normally work breakdown structure we split according to uh, area or responsibility there are many ways that we can split for instance in this situation uh, we split uh, using what we call roadway, general, and structure. So that is normally related to uh, perhaps category of work. Okay, category of work. We can differentiate according to structural element, such as what? Uh, substructure, superstructure. Uh, meaning to say column, beams, uh, floor, or slab, etc., etc. Okay. Location of the project. Let's say we do have zone or precinct. Zone 1, zone 2, zone 3, precinct A, precinct B, section A, section B, whatever big area that we develop, we can split 
those wood bedding fractures so that we do not mix things around. And then the, with regard to honor breakdown and the work for bidding, ah, this is another thing. Uh, okay, nowadays in a JKR project, okay, in JKR project, uh, you notice that uh, the BQ, okay, or the contract document inside the BQ, they already have uh, work item being put together according to uh, normally according to the section as in uh, very standardized uh, civil engineering uh, standard method of measurement etc etc okay that is how a quantity surveyor normally come out with this uh, bq because it was based on uh, civil engineering standard method of measurement etc uh, etc et okay but the issue is that sometimes JKR require the scheduling to be done according to the BQ, the sequence of BQ. Because why? Because it is easier for them to trace uh, activity which being paid, etc., uh, etc., et according to BQ. You see, the, that is the, the issue. But normally, traditionally, we do the planning scheduling. It is not based on BQ. It is based on sequence of work. Um, based on which activity come first, uh, naturally, uh, based on our construction method. Uh, if you want to base on BQ, then you will see all kind of, the, the diagram might not be looking very nice because it, it, is, it is not the way, that way anyway. Okay, uh, this example of WBS, you divide between uh, major, major activity and then smaller, smaller activity, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it depends on what you want to uh, uh, to categorize in. Okay, let's take example of project. Okay, there are two, uh, three activity, main activity A, B, C. Then basically under A, there are sub uh, a detail, detail activity or detail task. So this would be on level two. And then under A3, for instance, uh, there is a specific activity that you want to um, to split that will be in level three okay later on when we uh, i show you my personal project then you would appreciate this issue level 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 what is this thing which can be shown in the uh, microsoft project later on okay let's take a look at simple construction garage garage or tempat you simpan crater so easily you can split between uh, structural sorry structural element there foundation structural frame roof floor and wall external works and then you can split further uh, on the foundation you might have earthwork foot, footing a little bit stump and the structural work lean concrete column beams even roof also you might have a few element there the roof truss and uh, things like that floor so the same external work like that okay so if you can draw something like this this is what we call wbs and each of these item here uh, can be uh, can be uh, shown in our what we call uh, uh, activity listing activity listing so even inside the microsoft in, inside the uh, Computer software, we normally are going to list out this activity, but you have to be very careful in terms of putting all the detail. Okay, if you put too much detail, later on you might have difficulties with the updating because every time you need to update, you need to have all the information. At the end of the day, you might uh, abandon uh, what we call uh, the updating process because you need too much detailing. And you do not want to give uh, to the client too much detail anyway, because the client will uh, will find a way to basically ask you so many questions. So don't do that. Huh? You, you will draw yourself. Okay, legal relationship in arrow diagram. Uh, this is just another example. How do you read activity D? So if you look at this kind of diagram, okay, so activity D, you can start activity D after A and B completed. Let's say A completed in eight, 10 days, 
whereas B completed in 15 days. For sure, you cannot start activity day uh, less than 15 days. You cannot start activity D in 10 days. No, cannot. Because from this diagram, it tells us that A and B must be completed. Then only D can start. So D will start on the 15 day onward. Okay. D can start on 16 days if D1, doesn't matter. Or 17, 18, 19, 20. The, long, the, the, the later you start, the longer the project duration will uh, take place. Okay, so dummy activity I already mentioned to you. Let's say uh, dummy is indicated by this is the dummy activity, not the red one. The red one is just to show this dummy activity. Okay, let's say I draw dummy activity like this. Then how do I read C? C will only start when A and B completed. Uh, that is the connection. But if I delete this dummy activity, then C will only start after A completed. That's it. It ha has nothing to do with B. And how about D? Because the, the way we draw the arrow, it is up there, not down uh, to the D. So the way we read D, D will start only after B completed. It, goes, it has nothing to do with A at all because the arrow head for the dummy is uh, pointed toward C, not toward D. But if you reverse the drawing, the dummy drawing uh, instead of going into C, now it's going into D. And now you have to read D. Have, uh, you must start when A and B completed. Okay, and then uh, the letter... Uh, the, the letter finish date will basically determine the starting of D. Okay, now dependency or sequence uh, of the relationship. I already mentioned a little bit. Let's say there are two activity A and B. And you notice that uh, in the AON diagram, the left side is indicate start. On the right side, indicate finish. And then uh, B, the left side is start, finish. And you notice that this relationship is basically what we call it finish to start. Okay, finish to start relationship. Okay, now I want to show you between A and B. Uh, this is the situation that I mentioned when there is a lag. Let's say A is what we call a uh, floor. Uh, concrete floor. Or slab. When you complete floor, completed, and then let's take, let's say this is column. You want to erect column. Okay, you, you cannot erect column uh, when the concrete is still wet. You need to give a gap. You need to give a gap. This gap, we call it delay. We delay the starting of uh, basically B. So start, finish. The start of uh, B will be delayed a little bit. But how many days? So we indicate that plus could be one, two, three. It depends on the situation. So when you have those kind of things, this is what we call lag. And there is also possibility of negative lag. What does negative lag mean? Negative lag is the situation when you want to overlap. Uh, you want to overlap uh, perhaps... Uh, Ah, okay, we can use the same uh, example, but we have to imagine uh, concreting the big and long span of the, 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 the floor there. You don't have to completely, uh, to completely uh, what we call finish concreting the whole span of floor in order to, con to, to construct your column. You basically can start constructing your column whereby maybe some portion of the floor already completed. You see? So now you push this thing to start a little bit earlier than what is normally supposed to be in terms of finish to start relationship. This is what we call overlap. Okay? If you do that, then basically you can cut short uh, this uh, basically period of completion of a uh, uh, column instead of just waiting for the all the whole span of the floor to be complete uh, to become 
completed 100%, why don't you start uh, do the work at the beginning of the floor there where it might not basically uh, uh, jeopardize your basically your construction. This is what we normally do in cut and fill where there are big piece of land that we need to clear. We don't, we don't have to wait for the activity in sequence. So in such a way, you can cut short the activity completion. Uh, um, yes, yes. Question. Uh, isn't it uh, dependency? Uh, B will have dependency on A, whereby A needs to be uh, dry, then only B can start. But in this case, uh, we don't need for A to be dry, we can start in, uh, in order to cut short B uh, milestone, is it? Yeah, no, no. The, the one that I mentioned about negative lag, meaning to say portion of the A already dry up. Oh, okay, okay. I see. In a long, long, long piece of uh, floor. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. All thank right, you, thank then. you. Okay, no problem. Okay, now we go into a different type of relationship, especially for PDM diagram. PDM diagram. Remember? For AOA diagram, A sorry, AOA, AOA, and then AON, the only diagram, the only relationship they use is basically finish to start. Finish to start. So it is very simple. Anything using finish to start relationship is very simple. You don't have to crack your head. Uh, when you do the calculation, it's very, very simple. You just add the value plus, blah, 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 blah until the end. But when we do have different type of relationship, now things become a little bit complicated. Everything have to, uh, to be taken into account. Okay, so in PDM diagram, remember uh, the way we basically uh, uh, denote uh, the left side indicate start, the right side of the box there indicate finish. So that is the uh, always like that. So when the arrow is coming out from the right side of any box there, you already know that this is finished. And when it goes into the left side of the, another box, then that is the start. So the relationship is finished to start. So finished to start is very, is very basic relationship. In, in most of the relationship, we normally use this thing. But if you use this, the only type of relationship for all of the activity, meaning to say you have to wait each activity to be completed, then only you can start another one. Then only you start uh, the third activity. So it will take forever. Okay, but uh, which might not be necessary. We can overlap some of the activity. Okay, then start to start. Start to start activity, if you want to reflect in terms of drawing, remember the left side is start, and then uh, the relationship will go into another, uh, into B, but you need to have the arrowhead. Otherwise, people get confused. Sorry, I didn't know the arrowhead must be there. Uh, this basically reflect start to start. So what does this thing mean? Okay, let me give uh, some value. Let's say, a is uh, five days, whereas B is three days. If I do the calculation for finish to start, we start with zero. Zero plus five equal to belong to five. Five then transfer here, five. Five plus three equivalent to eight. So the project completion date is eight days. But if we do have a different relationship, let's say uh, A is still five, B is three, the calculation would be different. So for B, you notice this value here, zero, because it is coming from the left side, zero will be transferred here. Zero plus three equivalent to three. You see, B will be completed in the third day instead of the eight days. Just matter of relationship. Then the next, the third one, finish to start, FF. So finish to start happen when a relationship is coming out from again, the right side and then going into B into the right side. Meaning to say uh, both activity have to be completed at the same time, synchronized. The previous one start to start, those activities start at the same time, but uh, doesn't matter about the finish. 
maybe they, they will finish on a separate uh, date, doesn't matter. But finish to finish meaning to say, A can start at any time, B also start at any time, but the completion must be synchronized. Okay, must be synchronized. Maybe uh, the next activity will be C, because C is uh, such an important event that basically require them to be completed at the same time. Ah, that is the concept. Now, let's take a look at the calculation then. This is 5, this is 3. Okay. This is 5, this is 3. Okay. 0, 0 plus 5 equivalent to 5. Okay. 0 plus 5 equivalent to 5. And then, from this calculation, uh, we cannot basically, how are we going to put these values? That is the issue. Okay. How are we going to put this value? Well, this the 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 value that determine um, uh, the completion of a B basically is coming from this one. Regardless of uh, supposingly the uh, B, uh, let's say B start on the day number zero or so, zero plus T, they should basically complete it on the third day. But now because the relationship says so. So B have to be completed on the fifth day as well. So meaning to say, if we deduct back five minus three, then we will get two here. So meaning to say, B can basically start. Uh, we don't have to start on the uh, the first day. B can have can delay a little bit, macam relax sikit lah. Tak payah nak kerja kerja because. The timing of a completion of B basically on B, we want the same timing on the fifth day, meaning to say B can basically start on the second day if we add the value 2 plus 3, which is equivalent to 5. You see, the value will be, uh, will basically change according to the type of relationship. And later on, when you do that thing in uh, manual scheduling, uh, you need to take into account, but if you are using that uh, Microsoft project or Primavera, you don't have to, to think about this thing anymore because the computer will do the rest. Because the computer will use the same concept that we learned because they already put all kind of formula inside there. The result will, you will get the same result. If you compare between manual scheduling and uh, what we call computer scheduling, for sure, because the fundamental is the same. And lastly, Start to finish. Start to finish. Ah, this is very, very weird kind of relationship, I would say. Okay, never mind. We do have another slide when we mention uh, tomorrow about PDM diagram, then I will explain again. So, uh, start to finish relationship is basically the, the reverse of finish to start relationship. Uh, when A complete, uh, sorry, A basically start. And then uh, B basically finish. Okay, uh, this is very weird. Huh? Uh, start to finish. Never mind. I will explain tomorrow. Okay, which basically quite rarely being used, but there are some people who use this one. I have known uh, my ex student project planning uh, planning manager uh, do use in his project. Okay. All right. Now we. Okay, now 3.07. Okay, why don't we take a break? Okay, 10 minute break uh, before we continue with the rest of the slide. Okay, please take 10 minute break, please. Okay. Okay, welcome back. Duration or time? Activity or task duration. Activity or task duration basically reflect, for instance, uh, uh, each particular activity such as uh, earthwork, uh, piling, form work, etc., etc. Uh, we can basically use whatever unit that we want, day, week, month, or even hour, etc., etc. Project duration. Project duration reflect the overall project completion, and normally. Okay, and normally that would be uh, if we have a big, 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 uh, uh, for instance, uh, 
uh, activity here, normally project duration will basically appear here at the end of this uh, uh, rowing here. Finish uh, fit at the end of the finish. Okay. Get my pen. Okay. Here. This what we call project duration. Whereas inside here, inside the diagram, uh, reflect activity duration. Okay, the issue is that how do we get the those things? How do we determine activity duration? Okay, activity duration. Relying on past experience. This is what we call uh, database. Database, if you keep database. Normally, if you're a project scheduler or you, you do project implementation and planning, okay, most of the time at your office, you basically would have all kind of data that you gather from uh, your previous project, compile those things, and from that, it could be a very good basis for you to estimate, okay, to estimate uh, certain activity will require what kind of resources, what kind of uh, equipment, etc., 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 and from that you can calculate the activity duration roughly, okay. And then using a uh, computation, meaning to say you can calculate, and using standard guide. Okay, this standard guide is the one that I mentioned to you in US. Uh, mean scheduling. In US, there is a book called Mean Scheduling Mean Scheduling Method Rate or whatever. Okay. But maybe if you are in US, you can use this thing as a guideline. Uh, they do have a productivity rate for many, many activities to compare with. Okay. But we don't have that thing in Malaysia yet. Okay. Now let's uh, give some example. Let's give an example. How do you calculate? Uh, do we have? Okay, let me get. Uh, okay, maybe I use this uh, empty space here. So the concept of activity duration is basically derived from the 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 concept of productivity 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 rate. What is productivity rate? Productivity rate is being defined as output per input. Output per input. Input. And output normally uh, in term of quantity. Input in term of time. So I would say P equivalent to Q over T. Now let's imagine. Let's say you have a... Uh, uh, you have one uh, P, the productivity for painting, wall painting for workers. One worker, for instance, can paint a 10 square meter of wall in one hour. So productivity rate meaning to say, when you divide quantity output by timing, you can use uh, hour or day or whatever. Okay, I use uh, Hour, for instance, this is what we call productivity rate. How do you know? You need to measure, you need to observe uh, that particular worker doing work, and then uh, you get this information. And let's say uh, you get a project that require you to paint quantity of, uh, let's say, 1,000 square meter of wall. So the question is that, how many days this duration you basically require? How many days? So how are you going to calculate? So these days indicate duration. Well, you can use this equation, P equivalent to uh, 10 over one hour, okay? Q, this is what we call Q over T which is equal to P. So now, the uh, quantity is given as 1,000, okay? 
and then t is the one that you are trying to find the timing whereas p is the productivity rate this productivity rate for workers so from that equation what you can do is basically 1000 divided by t unknown then p is 10 one hour when you basically cross check those things and at the end of the day t is equivalent t is equivalent to 1000 divided by 10 so you notice that the unit is basically basically is cancelled out you end up with 100 hours if you want to get the unit in terms of days then perhaps to for easy calcula calculation let's say uh, your workers basically work or being paid uh, for 10 hours per day including overtime okay 10 then basically you get 10 days you see this is how we calculate activity duration based on productivity rate as i mentioned to you this productivity rate you we need to compile because it is it is not available and different organization would have different productivity rate depending on uh, many many factors even this one this is just an example for that for that particular uh, workers if uh, you hire unskilled workers he basically might take a longer longer period of time in order to to finish a 10 in a square meter okay at the end of the day in one hour you will get less of the quantity being done so that's why uh, at, at uh, any uh, any project the productive measurement have to be conducted because productivity do uh, or basically related to uh, duration of the activity the one that you plan is one thing but in reality it might not basically as what you plan okay so it will adjust uh, basically your timing okay now let's take a look at example of uh, one activity let's say in construction in construction we do have a hill and then we do have what we call petu uh, ni lembah this we need to cut this we need to fill so this is what we call cut and fill activity in order to flatten uh, one uh, construction newly uh, new construction site uh, we need basically to do cut and fill activity so cut and fill activity is one of the activity but let's say the excess material here you will dump inside here okay fine but then after you complete all things, you still have excess uh, material, excess earth. Cannot be left uh, on the construction site. Have to be transported out. Ah, this example. Excess material. This is what we call excess material. Material or earth need to be transported out uh, to the dumping site, okay, dumping ground and it is located 24 kilometers away. Okay, now you need to transport the material. Okay, so the activity is basically to move out the excess material. Uh, the quantity is 800 cubic meter. Okay, now you need to determine what kind of machine you require. Okay, let's say you need dumper or lorry, and then you need excavator in order to uh, to to count or to put the uh, the earth uh, onto the lorry so this thing 50 kilometer this is what we call productivity uh, related to machine or what we call output capacity machine do have output capacity so in another word productivity rate uh, in machine they normally known as output in a human, for instance, they will call it uh, um, labor output. Okay, labor output. Let's say uh, MT uh, is much faster, 50 km per hour. And then if you are running at full uh, full with all the loaded material, a little bit slow, let's say, you need to empty the uh, what we call uh, lorry there. It will require about 1.5 minutes. And then excavator is going to fill up the uh, your uh, lorry there. Uh, let's say 40 cubic meter per hour. That is the uh, data that you need. 
if for instance a good scheduler would basically uh, take into account all the necessary data and you know what a caterpillar for instance caterpillar do come up with a thick book uh, what we call the their machine output during my university uh, year i we use that book okay in order to calculate certain thing for our uh, scheduling or even estimating class uh. all right so now let's say this is a uh, resources okay this is a uh, uh, resources lorry lorry can carry let's say 20 cubic meter in two hours two hours meaning to say going back and forth to the dumping ground remember dumping ground is 24 kilometer away okay so this lorry will uh, will be uh, will have to be loaded by with the excavator fill fill up and then the lorry will transport and then dump the earth there so where does two hours coming from two hours is basically 30 minutes to fill in 59 minutes to transport one and a half minute to empty and 29.5 basically to return so 20 will be uh, 120 minutes actually from this you can calculate is 120 minutes Okay, that will be two hours. So in two hours, one lorry can only transport 20 cubic meter. And in one day, if he is, he is working like eight hours, he can only manage four trip. Four trip times 20 equivalent to 80 cubic meter here in one day for one lorry. Remember, we do have 800 cubic meter of excess soil to be transport. So if you wanted this thing to be done in a day, you basically need 10 lorry. You see, from the productivity calculation, at the end of the day, we are going to get how many number of machines, how, how many number of people, but people do not get involved in this uh, activity, for instance. Okay. So the duration of uh, our activity depend pretty much on the machine that we have let's say uh, we we only have one lorry then we have to extend the days what to do because we are the one that limit only one lorry to be used if we can afford uh, the timing that should be done that should be fine we are not in a rush why you have to hire 10 lorry what for and then uh if you have two lorries then it will be cut down into five if you have 10 lorries then you can shorten the project but all these things at the end of the day it basically relate to cost so again as i mentioned when we do uh, scheduling uh, everybody try to uh, do things at the minimum cost then only you get the maximum profit okay uh, that is the, uh, for the lorry. Let's say we assume uh, we are going to conduct this activity for one day, then we need 10 lorry. How about excavator? Okay, excavator, let's say excavator can uh, uh, fill in uh, 40 cubic meter per hour, and then in one day, 40 times 8 hours, then it turned out to be 320. This is in one day. But if we do have this kind of quantity, you have to divide with the uh, in number of day, then you need three number of excavator. Uh, then only you can, uh, the, the lorry and then the excavator can be synchronized. You can finish out the, the project in one day. So these are the thing. So remember, um, you basically, what we are doing here, we want to estimate how many days of the uh, earth moving activity uh, that we require so we need to take into account the uh, what we call the resources available okay uh, but then of course whatever resources it has something to do with the costing so perhaps the issue of costing will will determine how many number of uh, lorry etc etc okay next would be uh, some terminology early start late start early finish late finish total float and free float 
in order to do a network diagram, okay, network diagram, in a network diagram, you notice there are, there are number of figures inside the box, etc., etc., and that figures reflect this value, early start, late start, etc., etc. Okay, what are these things actually? Okay, now perhaps I, I can explain in a simple term first. Let's assume uh, our class. Our class basically start at 9, 9 a.m. Okay, that is the start, starting point of our class. And then uh, the time frame given is basically 9 until 5 p.m. That is the time frame, okay? If we start at nine and you notice that uh, nine to five, actually the, the, the class duration expected is around six hours only because uh, lunchtime is one hour and then morning session we break for 30 minutes and evening session is basically 30 minutes. So we end up to be not eight hours, but only six hours. Okay, let's assume the time frame is from nine to five, okay, from nine to five p.m. But we only need six hours. If, for instance, we start at nine, start at nine, without any break, six hours, we can complete at uh, 3 p.m. Okay, we can complete at 3 p.m. This is six hours, straightforward. All right, that would be another, uh, that would be the first scenario. Let's say scenario A. Another scenario, we still want to reach this time frame. This time frame. Let's say we want to complete the project at 5 p.m., but we do not want to start at 9. What could be the latest timing that we can start? 9, 10, 11. Okay, we start at 11 a.m. We can still finish 5 p.m. and it is still six hours. Okay, so the activity, the option A and B are the same, except that the timing. Okay, within the time frame allow. And you know what? The 9 a.m., this is what we call early start. Early start timing time or early start date. If we use date, then that would be uh, the, uh, the, the thing that we attach to, okay? Now we are using time, for instance, just to, to simplify things. And 3 p.m. here, this is what we call early finish. Meaning to say, if we start early, then we are going to finish early, early finish. Then another scenario B, 5 p.m. is what we call uh, late finish. In order to get this late finish, we for sure we are going to start late, late start. Okay, so late start at 11 a.m. and late finish is basically at 5 p.m. So you see, there are two scenarios here. And both are basically allowable because within the time frame of the project from uh, 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 the, the class or whatever. So similarly, in construction, it's also like that, okay? The one that you cannot change is basically the uh, project, uh, the contract period, let's say two years, but within the contract period, actually when you, you split up smaller, smaller, smaller activity, so when you arrange those activity, you are going to have this kind of scenario. So uh, that's why in the network diagram, we do have what we call forward pass calculation and backward pass calculation. Forward pass calculation is the scenario where you start, you start all the activity as early as possible and you, you can see when can you complete it. And backward pass is basically what if, if you start the activity as late as possible, all the activity you push back until uh, the, the, the latest date. Uh, you want to know basically what, what time basically each of the activity 
uh, have in terms of uh, perhaps free time so that you can adjust later on. Okay, and you know what? The difference between here, 3 p.m. in the scenario A and 5 p.m., this is what we call total float. Total float is basically the free time um, uh, those activities have with regard to the project completion date or project completion timing, which is equivalent to two hours, for instance, in this case. How about scenario B? What is the total float for, uh, for this activity? Well, the total float for this activity is still the same, two hours. The total float basically uh, two hours. But the issue is that if, for instance, you start at 11, for sure you, you, don't, you don't have the total float anymore. You, you already use up the total float. So the total float, basically the free time with respect to the project uh, completion date. Okay. So next would be uh, free float. What is free float? Okay, now I need to split the activity A. In order to show the free float, I need to split the activity A. Uh, similar to the class that we are having. Okay, remember we start at 9. Let's say at 9. And then we take a break. And then we do have lunch break. And then here, this is 9 a.m. This is 5 p.m. This lunch break is one hour. One hour. And then morning break, let's say uh, half an hour. Half an hour. This one is uh, ha half an hour. In total, basically equivalent to six hours. Still equivalent to six hours. Okay. But we split the activity A, B, C, D in uh, part by part. Okay. In order to define free float, free float is being defined the free time in between activity. Let's say activity A start at 9 uh, a.m. Okay. Uh, and then 9 and then 10.30. 10 10.30 10 will be completed. Then 11, 11, 12, 30. Okay. And then perhaps 12.30, maybe 2.30 or whatever. One hour. Uh, sorry. 130, sorry, 130. And then it should basically remain this one half minute, one half hour, one and a half, one and a half, and then at the end of the day, uh, equivalent to six hours. Okay, let's say in this scenario, A is my turn. I need to deliver a lecture from uh, in a slot A from 9 a.m. until 10.30, one and a half hours. And then 11, at 11, another lecturer will come. Uh, because that is his slot, okay, at 11. And you notice that in between those timing, half an hour, this is what we call free float. Free float is the, the, the free time A have in order not to encroach into the starting of the following activity, which is B, is half an hour. So meaning to say I can delay activity A, by the maximum is basically half an hour instead of finishing at uh, maybe i can start for instance at 9 or 5 so i will finish at 10 35 still fine because that is within the, the the free time that i have but don't go beyond half an hour when i go beyond half an hour meaning to say the following activity have to start beyond 11 when you encroach into the following activity, so meaning to say you already use up the free float uh, belong to activity A, okay? Similarly, between B and C. So in order to, uh, to understand the free float, you have to, to, to look at activity in pair. Let's say you want to know the free float for activity B, the free time that activity B have. You have to look at after B, what activity will basically follow, follow soon, which is activity C. So B and C, 
the free time they have is basically one hour. So the free float for activity B is basically one hour. So meaning to say I can delay activity B or I can extend activity B. Let's say instead of uh, require one and a half hours, I require one, uh, one hour and 40 minutes, but still uh, within the allowable. The most I can delay activity uh, B is basically by one hour. Okay. So definition of free float is basically what kind of uh, uh, free time uh, such activity have without, okay, without affect, affecting the starting or the following or subsequent activity. In this case, we, if we are talking about B, the following activity will be C. If we are talking about C, then the following activity will be D. So C basically have free float of uh, half an hour. But how about D? Well, D doesn't have any free float. Free float equivalent to zero because it already encroached into and uh, into what we call the um, the time frame of allowable uh, activities. Okay. So um, the concept of total float normally we are going to look at in terms of the overall project duration. Okay, normally within uh, the same path, later on when we look at the diagram, then only we can understand. For the time being, I just want to introduce the concept first, whereas the free float is basically the free time in between activities. So you can remember that thing first, later on we go into uh, the detail. Okay, and then uh, early start, early finish, late start, late finish, how do we we put into diagram. If we are using uh, what we call arrow diagram, we can use the top uh, value early start and then early finish as a pair, and then late start and late finish as another pair. Okay. For me, I would like to draw a diagram something like this. Let's say this is activity A, this is not numbering, not number 10, not number 20, and then this is the early start, early finish, late start, late finish. It is the same, except that the position is there. Whatever um, you draw, they will always legend that you have to show in order, uh, people, in order to make people understand, okay, this value represents either early start, early finish, late start, late finish. Okay, this is for AOA diagram. For AON diagram, this is AON diagram or PDM diagram, uh, it is much uh, better, okay? Because activity being represented by what we call nodes, and you see, this is what we call early start, compartment there, duration, early finish, late start, and late finish in the box. And then float, normally we will put a uh, total float. Total float, or you can put another free float inside this box, but normally we are going to uh, put total float, okay? All right. So normally in, uh, uh, in the calculation, the formula is very simple. Early finish is equivalent to early start plus duration. When you add up early start plus duration, you will get early finish. So that's why I say early start and early finish are being considered as one pair. Early start plus duration equal to early finish. Whereas the other pair is basically the late start. Late start is basically late finish minus duration. You get this thing through what we call a forward pass forward pass calculation whereas this one you get from backward pass backward pass calculation okay um in terms of formula total float and free float we are going to uh, i'm going to show you later on when we zoom into aoa diagram and aon diagram in a much a simpler way, okay, as not to get confused, because normally we do not remember the formula, 
Okay, you don't have to remember the formula. You just look at the diagram later on. From the diagram, you understand how to this value will be generated. Okay, some CPM uh, term, float, critical activity. Okay, critical. Critical activity is basically no float. What does no float mean? No float mean when total total float equivalent to zero in value. So meaning automatically uh, that activity is being being uh, categorized as critical when the value becomes zero. So we can calculate the value later on. Then you understand uh, that those activities are being called critical activities. The activity which basically do have certain total float value, they are being considered as non-critical. What does non-critical and critical mean? They simply mean that activity cannot be delayed anymore because there is no free time. So it's stuck there. Okay. All right. Okay. Basic procedure to develop a logical network diagram, either AOA or AON diagram. Basically, we can list all activities through the WBS. Then assign the time and resources required. We need to basically uh, get the duration through productivity rate, assign the predecessor, and then uh, based on the, uh, the list of basically uh, activity there, you develop log logical network diagram either using AOA, AON, or PDM diagram. And then you start computing the early start, early finish, late start, late finish, and at the end of the day, you will understand the critical path and you will determine uh, for sure instantly the project duration date. Okay. Now let's take a simple example. This is how the data will be given. Okay. Uh, in, in, in our class, but in reality, we are the one that have to develop this. If you are a planner, then you need to develop WBS in order to get all the activity. Then you need to calculate the duration and then you basically come up with the immediate predecessor based on the logical relationship. Okay. So you notice that ABC doesn't have the predecessor. So automatically you understand A, B and C basically must be the starting activity. How do you develop the, the, the AOA diagram? So you start with one node. And then you branches out the activity A, B, and C. Automatically, you will get this thing A. Automatically, you will basically A, B, C. You already draw. This is A, B, C. Okay. Then next, D. Activity D come uh, basically come before no no. The, 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 the prior activity before D is basically A. Uh, that's how you read. So D, where are you going to connect D? It's basically from A. Uh, that is how you read. So you know that the activity which is prior before D is basically A. And similarly for E, E um, activity prior to E is basically B, F activity prior to that is basically C, G is basically C and so forth. Based on this uh, information, you should be able to draw the network diagram. So network diagram means we start with one node, branches out according to whatever the uh, description uh, tell us, and then close with one node. So this is what AOA diagram is all about. But the work is not going to be complete yet. You need to, to calculate early start and early finish. Okay, let's complete those things. So now each activity do uh, is uh, given what we call uh, duration. So you put those duration at the bottom of the arrow there so that we can easily uh, recognize. And then, uh, then the box. Oh, because I found difficulty in order to draw, I just put box. We can put something like this. See here. 
where is that thing? Hmm. Salah ni. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. We can put something like this. Uh, something like this. Early start. Oh, sorry. Early start. And then uh, here. Early. Early finish. Hey, my pen is it's not working anymore. Okay. Macam tu lah eh. Kadang-kadang uh, boleh. Early, early start, early finish. Late start, late finish. In this one. But we put box. This represent early start. E, S. Okay. Early start. This one is early finish. Late start, late finish. Itu dia punya legend lah. Why? Uh, sorry. Um, A, B, C can run concurrent, is it? Oh, yes. Doesn't oh. matter. Uh, okay. Now, okay. Once you have those things, uh, then we are going to start to fill in the values. Early start, early finish, etc. Okay. Now, we go into the calculation. Simple calculation. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to come back with AON. AOA diagram with a full information. Okay, now we do what we call backward pass. Uh, sorry, uh, forward pass. Forward pass is basically the calculation from the left to the right. This is what we call forward pass. Remember, forward pass is basically early start plus duration equivalent to early finish. So, how do we start? We start with zero. Okay, start with zero. And then you add up with the uh, duration for each activity. Let's start with A. Zero plus five, equivalent to five. You put it five. Then how about D? Five plus four here, equivalent to nine. Then you go with B. B. Zero plus two, equivalent to two. Then you go for C. 0 plus 1 equivalent to 1. Okay. Then uh, you notice E and F. E and F, there are two arrow going into these uh, nodes here. Now, you need to evaluate for E, 2 plus 3 equivalent to 5. You put it here first. And how about F, 1 plus 6 equivalent to 7. And which one is going into this box? We are going to choose the bigger value. So when you do forward pass, you are going to choose bigger value. Why? Because I can only start when uh, F uh, completed letter compared to E. E only complete in the uh, fifth day, but then uh, I is basically take a longer time. So we choose the bigger number in order to put into this uh, box. Okay, next will be G. G is straightforward because it's just one line there. 1 plus 2 equivalent to 3. And then you notice our ultimate motive is to get this number. This box represents what we call a project duration. That is what we want. We want to know. Okay, but there are three arrows going into this box. So we need to evaluate for H, 9 plus 5 equivalent to 14 as one value. We hold on the value. How about for I? Uh, 7 plus 1 uh, plus 1 equivalent to 8 as another value. How about J? 3 plus 6 equivalent to 9. You see, between 14, 8, and 9, 14 will be the bigger number and 14 will be here. So now you see, this value, early start, early finish, on the left side of the value, if from this drawing, uh, we already fill in through the concept of forward pass calculation in order to get uh, the, the, the the early, sorry, this is early, early finish, eh? early finish value. Okay, so meaning to say our project will be completed in 14 days. But if we do that, it looks like there are some uh, value are not being filled in. So let's complete the calculation Do it using backward pass. So backward pass is for us to get the late start value. Remember, we, we, we start with the early start, 
plus D equivalent to early finish. Now, in order to get the late start value, we basically need to have the late finish value minus D. Then only we get the late start. So how do we do that? Okay, this value 14, you need to copy back into the last box here. 14. Okay. Then you are going to deduct with the uh, duration uh, using a uh, back arrow. So you go back along with the arrow that that where the activity come and then you subtract with the activity. Okay, for, for, for instance, hash. So remember this 14, 14 minus 5. 14 minus 5 for sure you are going to get back the number. From, from this you can learn when uh, the bigger value here is coming from uh, one arrow, for sure it, it going, it's going back using the same uh, we call it path. Okay. All right. How about I? 14 minus 1 equivalent to uh, 13. How about uh, J? 14 minus uh, 6 equivalent to 8. Okay. Now for D, 9 minus 4 equivalent to 5. Of course, you are going to get the same number. Later on, you will appreciate why. What is this value is all about? Okay, now let's go into E. E, 13 minus 3 equivalent to 10. And then how about... Uh, ah, okay. Here, this value, because there are two arrow going back, so you need to calculate uh, each of the root here. First for F, 13 minus 6. Okay. 13 minus 6 is equivalent to 7. You put it here first. And then how about from G? 8 minus 2 equivalent to 6. And when you go back in terms of back pass, uh, backward pass, you are going to choose the smaller value, which is basically 6 into this box. Not the bigger value. Bigger value is when you do the forward pass. When you go back, you are going to use a smaller value. Okay. Then, uh, B, how about B? 10 minus, 10 minus 2 equivalent to 8. How about A? 5 minus 5 equivalent to 0. And then how about C? 6 minus 1 equivalent to 5. And you notice that between 0, 8, and 5, which one is the smaller value or smallest value? For sure it is 0. Zero. When you start with zero, you are going to end up with zero. That means you get the calculation right. Okay, you could you could not go wrong with uh, this calculation if you do it correctly. Okay, so now you fill up all the information already. You fill up with the information. Okay, now what what kind of information that uh, you can conclude from this calculation or the diagram? Uh, this is basically the objective of a uh, network diagram. First thing first, you know that project is going to complete to be completed in 14 days. This is what we call project duration. 14 days. All right. Okay, that would be normally one of the question in the exam or whatever. So we want we always wanted to know this. But if you use software, Automatically, software will uh, just once you input the data, pium, you already get the the, the, the values. Uh, that is the beauty of software. But we 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 are learning about the fundamental first. Later on, you can basically double check. You can even uh, use this uh, what we call diagram and then uh, input your data into Microsoft Project later on if you have learned. Uh, to just simply check whether is it correct or not. Okay. Then that will be one of the uh, values. Uh, number two, we wanted to know the what we call critical path. Remember, in this diagram, there are one, two, three, four, four paths from the start until end. You notice that the first path is coming from the top one here. This one. One, the second one is from B E I, 
The third one is from C, F, and I, and the fourth one is from C, G, J. There are four roots from the beginning until the end. This, this is what we call four paths. But among the paths, there must be a longest path. Longest path. How do you know the longest path? Okay, you notice that. Let's say on the top one, if you add this value five, four, five. Oh, sorry, five. Okay, so you will get fourteen. Let's say the middle one, B E I, uh, three, five, six on the six. How about C F and I six seven eight eight. And how about C, G, J, uh, that will be nine. That will be nine. You see, path number one, number two, number three, number four. And you notice that path number one basically is the longest path, which is basically on the top there. And that is what we call critical path. Why is it critical path? You notice that we can calculate one more thing, which, which I call total fluid how do we calculate total fluid okay if we can calculate total fluid by subtracting the this value let's say for d we take the right hand side value minus the left hand side value minus in the middle so nine so if if we are using that formula remember uh, late finish, early start, early finish, late start, late finish, minus early start, minus duration. So you will get total float, total float equivalent to zero. And when you look at, at this particular uh, number, they are the same, they are the same, they are the same, this one is the same. And when they are connected together, you automatic you automatically know when you calculate total float based on that formula, you will get zero. This one is also zero total float, total float equivalent to zero. And when total float is equivalent 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 to zero, that means that activity is we call it critical activity. And activity on the critical uh, if the critical activity are connected together they are being called critical path and the critical path is the longest duration uh, of the path in order uh, for a project uh, to be completed for instance this project cannot be completed in nine days isn't it cannot it is impossible cannot be completed in eight days cannot because there are still activity going on cannot be completed on six days it can only be completed in um, uh, minimum 14 days but for sure it can be completed in 15 uh, 16 17 20 even 100 days doesn't matter but we want to know the minimum so that's why we always wanted to uh to 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 to, to know what is the critical path because critical path will determine the overall project duration completion date and then uh, automatically we know that those are the critical activities and why do we need to know critical activities? Because we want to utilize our resources later on. We want to uh, cater the activity which are critical uh, more compared to activity which is non-critical. I give you an example. Okay, let's take a look at the scenario of uh, line B E I. What happened if I delay activity I by one day? I delay activity I by one day. From the calculation, previous calculation, let's say instead of one day for activity I, let's say two days because uh, it is being delayed. So how the calculation will be affected? Okay, again, seven, okay, this is seven. Seven plus two equivalent to nine. Okay, but you notice that activity I will be completed on the ninth day, but it will not affect the project completion date at all. Project completion date still on the 14th day. Similarly, for uh, for this line, line uh, line C F 
uh, I. Let's say I delay activities uh, F by uh, uh, four days. Okay. If you do the calculation, you see one plus uh, this one, it will be 10. One plus 10 equivalent to 11. 11, this will be 11. 11 plus, uh, plus one, let's say one, still 12 days. But uh, the issue is that what if, if I delay activity A, D, and H, even by one day, let's say I delay activity uh, H by one day instead of six days, now it becomes six. From the calculation, you can see the project completion will be delayed by another one more day. So in, in another word, this will be directly related. So that's why uh, we wanted to know the critical path because the critical path meaning to say total float are zero, meaning those activity doesn't have the free time. You cannot adjust, it basically gets stuck there. So anything happened to that particular activity, it will infer the project completion date. So that's why we wanted to know those things. Okay, now we already defined total float and free float. Our free float, we do not define it yet. Okay, now maybe we can just simply go uh, very quickly because once we uh, we show you the uh, what we call uh, AOA diagram, perhaps you can see. Okay, now let's take a look at this diagram. Okay, ah, all right. So remember the active, the free float basically is the free time between uh, two activity. Let's say I wanted to know what is the free float of activity, free float for activity E. So uh, activity E, the subsequent activity will be I, okay, from the diagram. So I basically from the original diagram basically will start on the seventh day. This is the seventh. Whereas activity E can be completed in five days only in day number five. So meaning to say activity E do have free time two days. If you uh, look at this situation, so the early start of early start of I minus early finish of E. That is the definition of free float. Uh, Activity E do have two days that key, uh, that, that activity can be uh, extended or have a free time or even start a little bit late. They, they still have two days to, to, that you can spend or catch up. But whereas activity F, it doesn't have any free float because the, the, the value here seven is taken after F. So meaning to say immediately after F completed, then uh, activity I will start, meaning to say F doesn't have any free float. Okay, that is the concept. But then uh, tomorrow we are going to look into uh, example into our uh, AOA diagram and then subsequently PDF, then perhaps you will get the idea better. Okay, lastly, uh, critical path, okay. Critical path by definition is the summation of the longest duration in the network. Remember, in a network diagram, there could be many, many paths. From the left until the right, you can count the, the connection from uh, the left until the, the, the start until finish. But among uh, the path, there could be minimum one or multiple so-called critical path. The, 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 the longest duration in that path. But in our example, we show you only one critical path. But in reality, the critical path could be multiple. So don't get confused. Critical path, it is not singular. It could be multiple. But in our situation, we only show you only one for a simple diagram. Okay, let's take a look at this diagram. Okay, if there are how many paths? One is using here. This is path number one. This is path number, let's say this is path number two. And then, uh, and then this is path number three. There are three paths. Okay, if you count, 
Okay, if you count without without uh, doing all kind of uh, what we call calculation, you don't have to messy the diagram something like this. But just by looking at the diagram, you already know the answer. Okay, if people ask you, okay, how what how many duration of uh, uh, duration of the project? Well, you can just simply for root number three, 20 plus 20, 40. Okay, root number C and root number three. Root number two. Root number two, 15, uh, 20 days, 30, 35. Okay, root number one. Root number one would be 25, 35, uh, 40, 50, and 60. And you know what? This is the longest duration uh, summation uh, summation of the root. And if you do the calculation, you will get 60 days. You see? As fast as that. So that's why AOA, AOA diagram is very easy because it is finished to start relationship. It's meant for a simple uh, project which finished start relationship. You can use this uh, diagram, for instance. And what are the critical activity? Without even uh, calculating the total float, et cetera, to get the... Uh, to know whether the uh, the total float is zero or not, no, don't crack your head. You already know the 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 longest summation of the path there. This would be the critical path which is being colored in red. As simple as that. The rest of the activity do have free time. Okay, but the free time that they have is basically have to be shared among themselves. Uh, example. Let's take a look at this uh, activity, uh, root number three. Root number three, 20 days here, 20 days here. But if you add 20 plus 20, equivalent to 40. Our project basically uh, require to require 60 days. Meaning to say, if you deduct 60 with 40, meaning to say 20, 20 day left. 20 day left uh, mean, let's say activity H, I already experiencing some delay, delay up to 20 days. So I can change this value when I update the project, not, not 20 days, but 20 plus 20 equivalent to 40. So meaning to say I already use up 20 days. So even though if I calculate initially, uh, total float for activity C would be, uh, would be 10 days. And then activity H will be 10 days also, but 10 days and these 10 days are being shared together uh, by, uh, by uh, the, those activity in the same line, okay? In the same line, for instance. Meaning to say, if for instance, uh, activity H already used up uh, maximum 20, so meaning to say activity C cannot be delayed anymore. Otherwise, the project will encroach 60 days that is the issue okay uh, but basically uh, those non-critical activity mean they do have free time okay now let's take a look at um, aon diagram so if you look at this diagram there are three routes uh, from uh, a b okay a b here a b till here and then A, C, F, G, the here, A, C, F, G is up there. And then the third one is basically D, E, H until here. There are true, three root. There are three root in this, uh, in this diagram and there are three path. And if you calculate, we have not gone into AON diagram calculation, but the method are the same. You notice that when you add up all the duration, okay, you can, sorry. The duration there. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you add up all duration here, uh, four plus here and here, that will be the longest summation of the path, and the critical path would be this path, this this line. Without doing any calculation, you already know the answer. The project will be completed in thirteen uh, day for sure. And the critical activity are 
A, C, F, and G. F and G, whereas A, uh, whereas B, D, and E, and H basically can be considered as non-critical activity, meaning to say they can be delayed by, uh, by, by, by uh, the value of total float. We need to calculate. Uh, if we, you want to know the value of total float, then you need to, to do the forward pass and backward pass. And lastly, okay, critical path. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, AON diagram with all the figures. This basically indicate early start, early finish, late start, late finish. Okay. Um, later on, we will learn about this thing later on, but I want to uh, show you uh, the concept of critical path, okay? There are how many roots inside here? Okay, how many roots? Basically, one is using A, okay, let me, A, B, E, H, J. That would be the first root. And then the second one is basically A or A, B, A, B, F, and then J. The third one would be A, C, F, J. And the last one would be A, D, F, J. You see, there are four paths in this diagram from the beginning A until J. And if you add up all the duration within that path, A, B, E, H, J, A, B, E, H, J, you will get 8, 14, 16, 26. A, B, F, J, you will get 27. A, C, F, J, A, C, F, J, you will get uh, 5. Uh, 14, 24, and then uh, A, D, G, uh, 4 plus 2 equivalent to 6, 16. And you notice one thing, the longest duration uh, of this network is A, B, F, J, 27. And that 27, if you do the calculation, will be equivalent to 27 as well. That is the concept of the longest uh, duration in a, in a, in the path. Automatically, it will influence the project completion date. I need to say, our project can be completed minimum twenty seven days. Yeah, for our project can be completed twenty eight days, twenty nine, thirty, one hundred days doesn't matter. But we are going to calc we want to know basically the uh, minimum one is basically twenty seven days, and. From this diagram, later on, you know what? The PDM diagram, I like it, PDM diagram, because the ability to calculate total float in a very quick way. Okay, how do you get total float? Total float is basically you can just compare between this value and this value. 27 minus 27 equivalent to zero, or 17 minus 17, 17 minus 17 equivalent to zero. So you see, the one which, which basically color in red indicate total float zero, zero. You don't have to calculate because uh, the value are the same. Uh, uh, this one is C do have value, eight minus five equivalent to three, but for B basically zero. So you can calculate, either you use a nine here, minus eight equivalent to one, or on the right side, hand side, this one, total float, this one is uh, a lot more, uh, 11. This one is basically 11. Okay, you see, total float you already have for all uh, activities. How about free float then? Okay, if you wanted to know the free float, free float normally occur when uh, situation like this, when there are arrow, something like this, Ah, then there is a there is a potential for free float to happen. If it is just simply like this, uh, from D to G, then there is no total float because why? Uh, sorry, free float is basically the difference between this value and this value. 
So the free float for activity D is equivalent to 4 here, 4 minus 4. Meaning to say the early start of the following activity minus the early finish of the current activity, that will be the free float, which is equivalent to 0. But in this situation, C, you notice this value 8 and 5. 8 minus 5 equivalent to uh, 3. So meaning to say activity C do have free float equivalent to 3 days. So in such a way, C can be delayed or you can play fool with C. You didn't have to rush with C. Uh, that is the concept. Why we wanted to know the free float and total float because uh, when delay happen, uh, we wanted to know what could be the impact to our project. Uh, if you use basically software, automatically software can uh, can give the calculation almost instantly. Uh, that is basically the concept. All right. So having said that, so we already completed two topic, uh, two or three, three topic for today. Are you there? Yes, I'm yes. still here. Yes. 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 So that would be the uh, topic that I want to cover today and uh, we continue with uh, tomorrow. Do you have any question? So before we go, please, uh, I will share with you with the attendant list. Uh, let me say here, are you familiar with the UTM Smart app? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, good. Okay, let me show the code and then later on you will scan as just as a record. It's a formality. For me, it is okay. If you couldn't make it throughout the session, it's okay anyway. We are adult anyway, right? It's not school children anymore. Second. Use section uh, three. So for those who are in section eleven, never mind. You can just simply scan using the same the same QR code. It will be recorded as well. Okay. Uh, Cik Rahim, ni buat kat mana? Yeah, yeah. Buat kat UTM Smart ni. Eh? Ah, uh, have you download the UTM Smart? Ada, ada, ada. Ah. Uh. There is a QR code there on the on top left side of the screen there. Uh, some of you already scanned there. Okay. So you scan automatically, your attendant will be recorded. Okay. So if you don't have any question, that's it for me for today. Uh, thank you for coming to class and see you tomorrow, inshallah, at 9 a.m. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, bye bye. Sir, bye -bye. Sir. Thank you, sir. I have a question. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. For the last slide, which one you not calculate? Uh, apa namanya? The the late. Finish. The what? The late the late finish. Uh, late finish for the A A O N. Uh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, the, the last slide. Yeah, yeah. Tak apa, besok kita ada lagi. Besok, uh, tomorrow we are, we are going to zoom in into AOA diagram with all the example. Then we are going into AON diagram and then PDM diagram. And the calculation that you are asking will be there. Oh, okay. Uh, for today, I just want to, to, to give you the concept only. Mm. Uh, actually, okay. I wanted to... Uh, to 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 um, to express the concept of critical path ni itu aja oh okay uh, okay bye uh, bye uh, yeah 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 nanti besok kita pergi okay mesti je alright thank you uh, okay sir alright uh, saya uh, kerja dekat jago so esok saya kerja boleh ke lambat sikit uh, saya masuk kelas sebab saya meeting sekejap pukul sembilan tu sampai maybe paling lewat pukul sepuluh habis lah boleh. Siapa tu? Boleh. Ha? Tu? Saya Nur Hamsia. Oh kamu KL? Eh? JB ke KL? Eh? Uh, saya uh, JB. Saya kerja kat JB. Tapi ambil part time dapat kat KL. 
Oh, I see. Uh. Sama juga kan dia kompak juga kan. Uh. Uh, tapi tak apalah kat ini apa tu orang kata yang group ni dia banyak online kan. Uh, it should be okay. Uh. Okay, no problem. Okay. Alright then.